Creation Ministries International is the new face of Answers in Genesis on the web. They have a new website, a new look, and a new design, but apparently no new arguments. Case in point, their article, Is Evolution Scientific? They begin by using the same criteria for science set down in 1995 by the National Science Education Standards. They boil it down to six separate criteria and attempt to show that, in each case, evolution does not meet the standards for being scientific. This is a six-part video series that will take on these criticisms one by one. This first part will cover their first point, observational data. Their so-called rebuttal is nothing more than the old you weren't there canard. See what they say. Ask the average person what evolution means, often they will describe it like we came from monkeys. So showing students examples such as light and dark colored moths evolving into various populations of light and dark colored moths hardly constitute proof of evolution. Of course, what the average person thinks evolution means is not the same thing as what it actually does mean. They're using their old macro versus micro evolution canard, although they don't phrase it in those words. They also quote mine from Dawkins to make it appear that he has said that evolution hasn't been observed, when anyone who has read his books knows that this is absolutely not the case. For the evolution of extant species, we have much better examples than the peppered moth. You've probably heard about fruit fly research. This is what those political fruits John McCain and Sarah Palin keep mocking. But research into fruit flies, technically Drosophila, has provided us many insights into evolution and even our own biology. Their mutagenic nature, together with their short generation time, means that we can observe evolution at a rate much more accelerated than we can with humans. The reason why is that 75% of known human genetic diseases have a corresponding genetic match in Drosophila. Additionally, Drosophila share 50% of their protein sequences with mammals. This allows us to have insights into all sorts of genetic conditions, from Alzheimer's to Huntington's, as well as Parkinson's, diabetes, immune deficiency, and even autism. Without an understanding of evolution, this entire line of inquiry and discovery into numerous human diseases would be completely closed off to us. The common creationist complaint is that, even after all this evolving, the fruit flies are still fruit flies, and therefore it's just microevolution. This shows a profound ignorance of the way evolution works. Evolution is not a ladder, as creationists seem to think. Evolution is a tree, with each species on its own branch. To make a new species, the tree branches out again. This happens when a population becomes divided for a period of time, and their evolutionary changes, what creationists would call microevolution, build up enough to where they're so different from each other they cannot produce viable offspring capable of reproducing under natural conditions. Drosophila is a genus, not a species, and it represents a branch of the evolutionary tree with many species branching off from it. Moreover, a new species of iguana has been found in the Galapagos Islands. This has been confirmed by genetic sequencing. Geographically isolated on a particular volcano, the species descends as an offshoot from a parent species and has about a 7% difference in genetic structure. By way of comparison, other species of iguana on the island have about a 2% difference in genetics. For an even better example, look at Padarsa sacula, a green-backed lizard. In 1971, biologists moved five specimens from their home island of Pod Capiste to the neighboring island of Pod Makaru. In just 36 years, they underwent rapid evolution in response to their new environment. Of the many changes evolution caused in this new population, the most amazing is the evolution of cecal valves, which aid in digestion by providing an incubation site for intestinal flora. This is incredible, because cecal valves have only been found in 1% of scaled reptiles, and with the exception of this new population, in 0% of this species. Not a single instance has ever been discovered outside of this newly evolved line. Here is a clear example of what creationists say can never happen. The evolution of a new body part where one did not exist before. But perhaps most impressively, biologists have caught fish in the act of evolving. A species of cichlids in Lake Victoria has been observed in the process of diverging into two separate species, exactly as evolution says happens. In this case, they're adapting to different kinds of vision. 
Scientists have determined in the lab that mutations in these fish adapted their visions. The ones in deeper water, because of natural selection, became more sensitive to red light, and the ones in shallower water became more sensitive to blue light. Along with this gradual change in sensitivity came a change in the color of the fish, which again is what you would expect from evolution. As the fish's eyes adapted, sexual selection meant that mates that were more visible reproduced more often. Again, this drove natural selection to favor mutations that made the fish's hue more visible to its potential mates. There are two interesting things about this observation. One is that it happened without geographic separation, confirming the concept of sympatric speciation, observed before and inferred in many other instances. The second is more relevant to this subject. If all we had were either line of fish, the creationists could write this off as simple microevolution, just adaptation to changing conditions. But here we have two separate lines adapting in two separate ways, to the point where they have become separate and distinct species. The fact that evolution has made it past the species barrier has been observed once again. There are numerous examples of observed speciation, both in the wild and in the lab, in all sorts of different animal forms. These creationists just picked one example, classic cherry picking, and even then they didn't properly refute it. Our first criteria, has evolution been observed? Check. Stay tuned for part two of this series, covering accurate predictions made by the theory of evolution.